Hello, everyone. Uh, we're so excited that you're here to join us today. Uh, my name is Neil Mraza Keyswood. I'm an assistant director of admissions uh, in our undergraduate office of admissions. Uh, I hope you all are having a smooth finish to the end of your school years uh, as you prepare to enter into the application process. Or for those of you who are just learning about Northwestern uh, or other uh, universities, we're excited to introduce you to our uh, maybe your first info session. Um, just a little bit about me. Uh, I consider myself to be an anime fanboy, a pizza connoisseur, uh, a former archaeologist, now admission officer. Uh, from uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts, born and raised, uh, and in the past also a uh, anthropology graduate. Uh, I'm so excited today to be joined by Anne. Uh, if I want to pass it over to introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks, Neo. So hi, everyone. My name is Anne. I am um, from Oxford, Mississippi. I'm actually studying mechanical engineering with an emphasis in manufacturing and a certificate in design at Northwestern. Um, and Northwestern to me really means community. And I have loved the community that I found here at Northwestern. And I found it in a couple of different places, but a couple of those are in the Society for Women in Engineering and also through a program called Books and Breakfast, where I tutor kiddos in the Evanston Public Schools three mornings a week. And I am just so excited to be here to talk to you all about Northwestern because I love this place. It's so great. Great. Uh, so we're gonna. So the plan for today is we're gonna run through our typical info session, and then after that, leave room for any questions and answers at the end. Um, you have the opportunity, if you like, uh, feel free to engage with each other, with us through the chat. Uh, behind the scenes, we're joined by our another assistant director, Hillary, giving her a special shout out, who will help answer any questions you might have in the chat as well. Uh, but just to start off. Um, so Northwestern, as you can see on this map, uh, we're located just north of Chicago, about three miles out from the city center in the college town of Evanston, um, where, which in the, uh, traditionally is on the lands of the Council of the Three Fires, the Ojibwe, Potawatomi, Odawa, as well as Menominee, Miami, and Ho-Chunk nations. Um, so with that local context, we are have the great opportunity of being uh, just north of a uh, of the greater city of Chicago, where students will be able to travel to uh, to visit our uh, other campus, uh, which has our uh, School of Professional Studies, our law school, and our medical school. Uh, and so there's a great campus shuttle that will travel from our main campus on Evanston all the way down to Chicago. Uh, students also have the opportunity to use the public transport, the bus, the metro, uh, and are typically pretty frequently accessing the greater city. Uh, and so the great thing about Northwestern is you get really a nice uh, college town campus vibe while having great access to the greater city of Chicago. Uh, and both of these towns, uh, as you'll see, are very walkable. Uh, and so just, uh, just on the outskirts of our campus into, uh, into Evanston, uh, we have a great density of coffee shops. Uh, you can access a local Whole Foods or Target, have a whole bunch of different restaurants as well. Uh, but also students will be accessing Chicago for maybe the different food culture, the food scene. I know for me, a priority right now is figuring out the best pizza places in Chicago. Uh, students will go to the different museums, uh, the aquarium, experience the theater scene, uh, or also the sports life too. In many of these places, students access will actually get discounts uh, as being a member of the Northwestern. Uh, do you have any favorite highlights about Chicago, um, Anne? Yes, absolutely. So actually my favorite way to get into the city is through something that I personally call Anne Days. And so basically when I just need like some time alone, I hop on the L or the Metro or the bus or however I want to get there and go straight for the Art Institute. I love art. And so I love being in Chicago with all these fantastic museums that are right at our fingertips and so I go explore the paintings then I go take a walk maybe a Millennium Park maybe say hello to the bean sometimes do a little shopping and then always have to hit up a Chicago restaurant they're just the best um, so in addition to Andes obviously Chicago has a lot more to offer our students we mentioned the food it's phenomenal but also 
like internships and careers and just community involvement opportunities more broadly. It's been really great to have kind of that small college town feel, but also not have to compromise on the access of a big city. So I've loved Chicago and Edmondson. Yes, there's so many uh, resources at your fingertips. I know for me, one of my favorite highlights has been the Field Museum. I love to go there. And uh, I, like I said, as a former archaeologist, love to geek out on their whole figurine con- collection in their Maya, uh, their Maya section. Um, I also love uh, how in Chicago, everything's very accessible. But right along the, the um, lakefront, there's an awesome path that I like to bike through. And you get to see a beautiful view of the Chicago skyline. Uh, but even within our Northwestern campus, we're right on the lakefront. Uh, so we have two private beaches. Our campus overall is about a mile long uh, and about a half mile wide. So very walkable, very accessible uh, and easy. And then maybe if you're not too, uh, if not feeling walking around campus that day, we also have the inner campus shuttle, uh, which are great for the winter days. We might not want to go walk through any of our snow or colder, uh, colder during colder times. Um, but with that said, our, our campus body itself uh, has over 8,000 different, uh, oh, 8,000 undergraduate students uh, representing over 50 different states, 95 different countries. Uh, and so with that, we have such a wide diversity of identities, experiences, academic interests. And you'll see that we have a student to faculty ratio of six to one. Uh, and so about 80% of our classes have, are 20 students or fewer and only 2% have more than 100 students. And any classes that have uh, more than 40 students are actually required to hold a discussion section, be with a TA or faculty member. So even in those larger spaces, we wanna make sure you have opportunity to engage with one another and get to learn uh, from your peers, because that's when we are, we're a community of learners. Everyone's coming in with their different academic interests, different uh, experiences, and really in these classroom settings, and even outside of the classroom settings, we wanna give you the opportunity to learn from one another. Um, and so it's really amazing to see where these, um, where different passions lie and maybe the different ways we making new friends and uh, hearing about what other students are doing will even guide your future interests. Uh, and so this really ties into our greater culture of uh, and, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about our academic exploration later on. Um, but at our university, we operate on a quarter system. So many of you might be more familiar with our semester, uh, semester-based system, which will, you'll be taking classes during the fall and spring. But at Northwestern, students take classes during the fall, winter, and spring across usually 10-week periods uh, with the option of taking uh, summer courses or students might be doing different internships, research experiences during the summer as well. Uh, and so typically for our Northwestern students, we'll take about four courses per quarter uh, 12 courses per year and coming up with by the time they graduate with 48 courses overall. And so compared to a semester schedule where you might be taking four to five courses a semester, graduating with around 32 to 38 courses, uh, you'll have a lot more opportunity here, about 10 to eight, eight to 10 more courses here uh, that, as opposed to a semester based system. And so this really ties in and gives you the opportunity to explore different interest areas, different uh, areas that might be compounding your interest. Uh, we have uh, different uh, certificates, uh, majors, minors that we'll talk about in a little bit as well. Um, and so with that said, we also operate across six different schools for our undergraduate students. Uh, so our main and largest school is the Weinberg College, College of Arts and Sciences, uh, where you'll be taking uh, where you'll be taking your core sciences from your chemistry, biology, maybe anthropology, sociology, language courses, and whatnot, uh, you'll be finding in the College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, we have our McCormick School of Engineering, which has a approaches engineering from a whole brain philosophy. Uh, so really a logic and creativity, thinking about how you can craft um, innovation within the field. Our School of uh, Communication, which takes approaches, all forms of communication from production, acting, design, uh, to the sciences of speech and hearing. Uh, our School of Music, uh, which if you, I will mention for those interested in School of Music uh, in our uh, practical process, uh, there is an additional application, um, uh, an additional audition process for those that want to do performance track with music. We have a School of Education and Social Policy, which is really focused on crafting the future uh, change makers in society, and then our School of uh, uh, Journalism, 
which is one of the only undergraduate schools of journalism uh, in the top 10. Uh, and so you have the opportunity to take courses across schools, major, take majors, minors across schools, and also uh, you can approach uh, a dual degree process. Uh, and again, saying, uh, our big saying is and is our DNA. We're really encouraging students to uh, overlap, explore, and see how these different uh, schools and minors might, majors might complement each other. Uh, you wanna share about, uh, about your academic journey and uh, academic experience, Anne? Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, so while my major is actually in the McCormick School of Engineering, I have very happily taken advantage of other schools on campus as well. So actually to fulfill engineering electives, I was able to take classes you probably wouldn't expect for an engineering elective. These are classes like painting and social inequality and gender and language and even cartography, which is the mapping of uncharted territory. Sorry. any Arrested Development fans out there will find that hilarious. So the flexibility and encouragement at Northwestern to take classes in other schools was something that like really stood out to me in my application process. And it's been the perfect place for so many like me whose interests range anywhere from fine art to best manufacturing methods. So I have been so thankful for that kind of interdisciplinary pursuit at Northwestern. I've seen it in my engineering education, and I've seen it in the rest of my friends' education and the way everyone's able to kind of craft their own approach to Northwestern. Okay, so student stories like these might be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves though since you obviously began at the beginning and at the start of your northwestern journey there are lots of resources here to support you whether you're sure or unsure about what you want to do so my friend pravika actually came into northwestern knowing exactly what she wanted to study she had been taking coding classes when she was eight she loved engineering she loved computer science and so she actually applied to mccormick our school of engineering but one thing that was really important to Ravika is that she chose something that let her do engineering and also everything else that made her special. So in addition to her engineering degree, Ravika also kept up with her high school theater skills and added a theater minor. She also added the design certificate after talking with the professor and finding out how cool it was through our Siegel School of Design. And this program actually even took her to San Francisco um, where she actually got to study the design process at our San Francisco campus. And she had so much fun exploring the city, learning more about the process and came back with a ton of new friends. Um, so Pravika knew exactly what she wanted to study and that was great. It worked out really well for her, but some of us truly don't. And that is a-okay. Like we're all just in a place of discovery. So our joke with my sophomore year mate Sarah was always to ask what major are you today so Sarah came into Northwestern four years ago knowing she wanted to be in a position to help people but she didn't know exactly how so she applied to Northwestern as our most popular major for undergraduates in our admitted class which is undecided after a few months Sarah fell in love with her psychology classes and actually switched into Weinberg to study pre-med she got all the way through organic chemistry and realized that wasn't exactly the right fit for her. So she actually switched into education in our school of education and social policy. Something still wasn't right though. So Sarah did a lot of reflecting and she realized that what she loved most was actually her work at the Evanston nursing home where she volunteered. So she actually turned to career advising and realized that this was a job and that she could be a PA. So being a physician's assistant actually gives Sarah more flexibility in her career and lets her do what she loves most, which is helping people. And Northwestern really gave her the resources and support to guide her and prepare her to do what she loves. So no matter where you are during your journey at Northwestern, faculty and advisors can be a great resource like they were for me and so many others. So like my freshman year DT, professor who I regularly consult for career and life advice or my mechanical engineering advisor who when he isn't encouraging when he isn't consulting for Battlestar Galactica on scientific accuracy is always encouraging me to take classes in the art program and so my experience with professor is truly not unique. As Neo said, we have a six to one student to faculty ratio so every student has the chance to interact with our phenomenal professors. And all of our classes are actually taught by professors, which I think is really phenomenal. 
So if students need a little bit of extra help navigating Northwestern, which we all do at one point, there's so many resources available to our students, like ASLA or the Academic Support and Learning Advancement Offices. So I'm a peer coach in ASLA and I meet one-on-one -on -one with students to identify strategies for success, plan out schedules, and more generally figure out this whole college thing. We also offer peer guided study groups and drop in tutoring, which are all led by your peers who have taken those classes and excelled. ASLA really has a person first, student second attitude that I find both really, that I find really productive. It's also like all over all of the wonderful student resources that we have on campus. So all of these resources on campus, professors, advisors, ASLA, your friends, they will all help you navigate your own academic pursuit. So it allows both the deep dive and an interdisciplinary pursuit. Your studies will actually be broken down into three key areas. This looks like your major, your liberal arts scores, even for our engineers, and your electives. So this actually might sound like a lot of other schools that you're looking at, but here's the key difference. At Northwestern, you're actually choosing every single one of these courses. We don't really have like a standard set of coursework, like a general education checklist or a common core. When you then combine this with the ability to take more courses, as Neo said, across the quarter system, it leaves a ton of wiggle room for our students to explore new areas and take intellectual risks. Okay, so obviously, here, water break. So obviously learning doesn't just happen inside the classroom, right? And at Northwestern, we love undergraduate research. We actually reserve $3.5 million for undergraduate research alone. And to me, the best part about this is that this research looks different for every single student. So like my friend Becca, who's actually working at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab downtown and is studying how social factors affect COVID-19 outcomes. So if like Becca, lab research is your thing, we absolutely have that for you. But if you're interested in exploring something outside the lab, we have that too. So take my roommate, Annika, who's actually analyzing Reddit data to determine the correlation between social media and opioid addiction. On top of her computer science major, Annika is also a dance minor. And last year she participated in a research funded jazz nutcracker that explored the relationship between jazz music and dance improvisation. In addition to research, Northwestern students expand their horizons even further and go abroad. In fact, nearly a third of our students at Northwestern study abroad. Like my friend Salam, who actually studied abroad as a mechanical engineer in London at Queen Mary's College. So Salam took Mechi classes like aerospace while also taking history and architecture classes that took her all around the historical sites and museums of London. She really engaged with the culture and felt like quite a local when she she started picking up new British slang from her flatmates. And this was Salam's first time going abroad, so she was determined to make the most of it. Every weekend was an opportunity to travel and explore new places. Her highlights were chasing the sunset while hiking King Arthur's seat, eating gelato by the Venice canals, and drinking mint tea in the middle of the Moroccan desert. Her experience abroad was unforgettable, and she cannot wait to go back. And I personally cannot wait to read her travel blog. So research and abroad are just some of the ways that our students expand their learning, but innovation centers are another great example. So Northwestern is constantly supporting our students' innovative ideas. My friend Peter came to Northwestern ready to hit the ground running. As a first year student, he participated in Launch, which is our 10 week startup incubator program. At Launch, he founded Litterbox, which is a student run summer storage company for Northwestern students. The next quarter, Peter and his teammates turned to the garage at Northwestern, which is our Silicon Valley-esque business incubator, and they helped him build out a business model. There, they got connected with an executive at Grubhub who gave great insights into campus marketing, and they launched their first summer. They had nearly 100 customers. The next year, though, they wanted to get even bigger, and the Litterbox team was connected with even more mentors through the garage and the grocery delivery business. They then doubled their customers in just one year, and more importantly, gained a ton of experience in leadership and business opportunities. The garage gave Peter the space to grow his entrepreneurial skills and get hands-on experience that has helped him secure internships at PNG and Tesla. But he also developed an incredible network of mentors, professors, student entrepreneurs, and friends. 
And while we love a good entrepreneurial success story, at Northwestern, we also love the arts. In addition to the garage, we also have groups like Studio 22, which provide funding for innovative student films. Basically, whatever you're interested in innovating, they're not only resources, but also cheerleaders to support you along the way. So Northwestern is a place to grow personally and intellectually, but also to advance your career. So we have applied learning opportunities that are actually layered through our support structures and sometimes even built into our curriculum at Northwestern. So almost 70% of Northwestern students reported having an internship during their time at Northwestern. And for some students, this can even look like going abroad, like for my friend Val, who worked abroad at Bain in Spain. So at her internship, she was working directly with clients, all while having the opportunity to explore Madrid. She loved her experience so much that she traded a job at Bain in Spain for a job in Bain in Chicago after graduation, which I think says a lot about how cool Chicago is. So Northwestern also supports our students financially and academically in their internship pursuits. So two summers ago, my friend Larissa went to San Francisco to do her practicum which is the internship that is built into the SASB curriculum. So Larissa worked at the Gabby Gifford Law Center in San Francisco as an advocate for gun reform in Congress. In addition to receiving academic credit, Larissa was also supported by Northwestern Summer Internship Grant Program, or SIGP. So this grant gave Larissa the freedom to not have to choose between an internship that she loved and an internship that paid her. And Larissa loved her experience so much in policy reform that she interned a little closer to home in the UK government this summer. She plans to work in the UK government after graduation and I fully expect for her to be the prime minister today. And I know as a prospective college student full-time can feel really far away, but as a graduating senior, I'm here to tell you it comes <laughs> much quicker than you think. Um, and 96% of our class of 2019 were pursuing meaningful postgraduate plans six months out. I think this is a testament both the quality of the education we get from Northwestern, but also the amazing support that we have for career development. I know I can always talk to a career counselor, whether I have no idea where to start or I'm balancing offers. Our students wind up at a variety of really cool and respected organizations around the world, and we get just a taste of what they're up to on the next slide. Yes, it's as you can see, we have so many different both well-known organizations that our, stu our students will step into professionally um, from all, all sorts of industries. Uh, so going in some into tech, going in some going maybe into more on the educational side, part, working within uh, community-based organizations, many other students also pursuing postgraduate uh, studies or research. Um, and so no matter what your uh, trajectory is, your interests are, Northwestern really wants to be sure to support you and also even tie you into different, um, any of these different networks or connections that might be existed. Um, some of our notable alumni uh, include uh, individuals like Megan Markle. Uh, we have various different Pulitzer Prize winners, Emmy Award nominees. Uh, we have our late night comedy hosts like Seth Meyers, Stephen Colbert, tour sitcom notables like David Schwimmer and Julia Louise Dreyfus. Um, or even in the science field, uh, Gwen Shotwell, who's the current director of SpaceX. Um, so, so many of our alumni step into both these grander positions, but also more, um, like it's mentioned, community-based organization, education, uh, all, all those fields are really touched upon and students entering into them, um, fortunately from, as, as Anna was talking about, uh, from those hands-on learning opportunities from Chicago field studies to residencies and whatnot, go in prepared uh, with that hands-on learning from Northwestern to set them up for success uh, in future career tra trajectories. Uh, there's also a really great alumni network for students to be able to tap into. So maybe it might not be in these other notable alums, but you could also, there's a whole database uh, that our students can look and try to connect with different people in different industries, find mentorship opportunities, uh, inquire about uh, support to step into those industries. Um. 
Yeah, I am. I'm currently like job hunting and I am so thankful for that Northwestern um, network and mentorship and all of that. It's been really great. Um, yeah. So like I said, Northwestern means community and there are tons of expressions of our community here at Northwestern. So one of these ways is actually through just the way that we live, like our physical community here at Northwestern. So all of our Northwestern students will actually live on campus for two years, while some might choose to live on for all four. So resident halls are just one example of how Northwestern fosters a campus community. So between Sunday night ciders, late night munchies, and even a boat formal on the Chicago River, Dorms are always creating points of connections for our students. You can even get involved in dorm student leadership, like my friend Cami, and plan said boat formal. I think the fact that I'm still best friends with the three women I met the first day I walked into the outer third floor is really a testament to the strength of our housing system. And I know you all were wishing you could be at our beautiful campus right now. And I also was wishing you could be at our beautiful campus. But just to get a taste of what it's like, we do have a res hall video on our YouTube channel at undergrad Northwestern undergrad admissions. There are also just like a ton of great resources there, student panels, more information sessions like this. I highly encourage y'all check it out. So like I said, the Northwestern community starts when you get to Northwestern. And one of my favorite actual expressions of this is through our traditions. And Northwestern is full of so many wonderful traditions, some of which you may have heard of, like our week-long orientation program and the rock that we lovingly camp out for 24 hours just to paint on. So you can Google Rock Can Northwestern if you're not sure what I'm talking about. But my favorite part of Northwestern is just a little bit funny, but it's very, very Northwestern. Every quarter, the Sunday before finals at exactly 8 p.m., every student, no matter if they're off campus, in their dorm, or in periodicals, which is the absolute quietest section of the library, every student lets out one big primal scream. And I love it. It's so great. It reminds you to take a break and laugh. And I think it is so representative of Northwestern's culture more generally. We work hard, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. So of course, student organizations are just another big part of the undergraduate experience and another way that students create community on campus. So one thing I love about Northwestern, there's not really one way to do Northwestern. What we respect in our community is that you're engaging with the areas that interest you and your classmates will be there to cheer you along the way. So beyond our collaborative academic culture, Northwestern also has 500 student organizations. My friend Ashanika is the co-director of Mayfest and Mayfest every year puts on a show called Dillo Day, which is the largest student run music festival in the country. It is phenomenal. Our president even shuts down all of the libraries so that every student will take part in the fun. The concert is right on the lake fill and some of the past artists include Chance the Rapper, Dayat, and Kendra Lamar. And if cars are your thing, oh my gosh, do we have that for you. My friend Tucci, along with just about every other engineer I know, helps build fully functional cars and race them in formula, which is just one of three car building teams that we have on campus. These organizations and the other 500 no doubt do incredible things like putting on the largest student around music festival in the country or building fully functional cars from scratch and then racing them. But they also encourage connection and camaraderie among our students. And if you ask any senior what they'll miss most about Northwestern, I promise you they will say the people, because I certainly do. Great. Uh, thank you for sharing that. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, actual application process, materials that we need and whatnot. Um, so at the baseline, when you're applying to uh, colleges uh, for Northwestern, we accept both the Common App and Coalition application. With no preference for either of them. That is up to your discretion. Uh, and when it comes to the actual application deadlines, um, so our early decision deadline is November 1st, and our regular decision deadline is January 3rd. Uh, and so some of, you, some of you might be uh, a little unfamiliar with early decision versus regular decision. Uh, and the big difference is for us, early decision is a binding process. So meaning if you apply and are accepted to early decision, uh, you, are that, you are bound uh, by contract to attend Northwestern. And so this is really the option to go down. Uh, if you know Northwestern is your number one choice, you really just bleed purple and want to be a part of the Wildcat 
Um, there is a large difference in uh, application volume that we receive within early decision versus regular decision. Um, but also we're accepting about uh, the same rates, uh, half of students through early decision, half of students through regular decision. Uh, other additional benefit from early decision is you'll typically hear from us around mid-December uh, with your application decision. Uh, with regular decision, usually you'll hear before April 1st. Um, when it comes to the applications themselves, there's no difference between early and regular decision as to what materials you're submitting. Um, so what we're going to ask from you are, are an application essay. Uh, and so there's various prompts that you can explore uh, through Common App and Coalition uh, to respond to. Uh, and so this is really a great opportunity, uh, one of the few chances in your application to provide your voice and speak uh, from your perspective. Um, and so it really gives you an, uh, us a window into your personality or any aspects of your identity or whatnot you wanna to write towards that you wanna share with your admission officers. Uh, additional, in addition to that, we ask for uh, an optional supplemental essay, uh, which is essentially asking why Northwestern. Uh, and so within that, we wanna hear what about Northwestern sounds out to you, why you wanna be a wildcat, maybe what uh, is different about Northwestern than other institutions. Again, it's up to your discretion how you really wanna to respond to that question. Other, other aspects we'll need are your high school transcript, um, as well as letters of uh, recommendation, uh, at least at two are required, one from uh, your counselor and another from uh, a teacher or another administrator. Uh, you also have the option to submit additional letters of recommendation. Uh, typically students will add an, an additional one, usually around three we will, we will receive. Um, our big uh, point on that though is really making sure uh, when you are asking people for recommendations, thinking about what are they going to be able to share and speak towards about yourself. Uh, and so how, what is your relationship, relationship like with that teacher or employer uh, or volunteer supervisor? And what can they share about you that might not be uh, talked about in other parts of your application? Uh, and so thinking more beyond just, oh, they did great academic work. Um, so really get, getting an, uh, a window into who you are. Uh, as a student, as an employee, or as a community member as well. Uh, we also ask, and this year uh, we are continuing our test optional policy. Uh, and so when it comes to, you, you can submit uh, optional SAT or ACT scores to us. Um, and again, completely optional. We approach our application process, our review process from a holistic standpoint. Um, so we're looking at all aspects of your application together. Um, so whether or not your testing is included, that will not have an impact on your uh, application process. Uh, so we'll still look at the, your application in equal light, whether or not your test score, uh, test scores are included. Uh, I'll also mention on that note, when it comes to your high school transcript, um, we are looking at contextual, uh, at your transcripts contextually, so within your own school. Uh, and so we're not comparing uh, transcripts across different schools. Uh, and usually when we're looking at your transcript, wanting to see that you're pushing yourself with academic rigor uh, and taking those more rigorous courses that are within, um, that you feel comfortable at or have taking. Uh, also another conversation to have. With um, I also mentioned when we're reviewing our applications, we are need blind for domestic students um, and need aware for international students. Um, to speak towards our financial aid process, uh, again, uh, we will meet 100% of demonstrated need um, across the board. And so typically when you receive your, uh, your, uh, your admission decision, if you're accepted, you'll also receive your uh, financial aid package. And within that, you will see maybe the different scholarships um, and different work study allotments, things like that. Uh, also an uh, estimated family contribution. And so that will be your total essentially bill that will be towards Northwestern. Uh, and so on our financial aid website, there's a net price calculator, which you can use to kind of get a, a rough estimate of what your family contribution might be. Um, we do not, I will mention, we don't offer any merit-based aid. Um, and, and when it comes to, uh, again, for when it comes to reviewing applications, uh, for domestic students, which includes US citizens, permanent residents, and undocumented students, uh, we are in the decline. 
Uh, and again, if you have more questions about uh, our financial aid process, we really encourage you to reach out to our financial aid, uh, financial aid office. You can call, give them a call or email uh, with any questions on your plan. Um, and just to kind of close out with our formal presentation, uh, I really would like to encourage you to check out our different social media platforms. Uh, like Anne said, within our YouTube channel, we're posting a lot of great content from uh, school specific info sessions, panels on campus life, um, and then our, also on our uh, Instagram page, we tend to be very active with the different stories, giving insight into day in the life of a student. Um, and all these can be checked out again. Uh, so with that said, we're going to switch into our uh, question and answer component. Uh, uh, so again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat uh, and we'll see that we'll, we'll do our best to answer as many as we can in the uh, time we have left. Um, but to kind of to get us started, uh, and we had a question, what are the benefits of the order system versus a normal semester system? Yeah, absolutely. So I can't speak to a semester system since I've, I've been at Northwestern, but I have absolutely loved the quarter system. Um, it's given me personally a lot of freedom to change my degree around a bunch of times. And I actually graduated in March. So I like had plenty of extra free classes, um, but it also gave me a lot of space to take a bunch of classes that aren't actually counting for my degree. And I just thought were really interesting. So like, I've always thought computer science was cool. have never known how to code, took a cool coding class with a really famous professor just kind of for the heck of it so that's one thing that I feel like at the quarter system I feel like there's a lot less of a rush to get done and a lot of people do have additional minors and major that really do let you explore and like we said kind of make that northwestern um, path your own I mean the one thing I will like the quarter system is fast the classes go fast and you are you do have to stay on top of your work but I think that like the benefits like so outweigh that and the good thing is if it's fast and you're in a class that you hate, it's done really soon. But if you're in a class that you love, you can keep taking those classes. So I have loved the quarter system. It's probably one of my favorite things about Northwestern. Um, and yeah, it's so much flexibility. I agree. So I, I, I will say I wasn't a Northwestern student, but I have been able to attend uh, both undergrad graduate at a semester and quarter based system. I think for me, the big difference was the pace, definitely, um, which I think was really, it was an adjustment and you got to really figure out how to stay organized and uh, just keep a nice schedule together in my experience that helped out quite a bit. Um, but I love that extra flexibility to explore. Uh, and just as you said, if there was maybe a class that wasn't my favorite, I knew it was going to go by pretty quick. I think the other big perk I noticed, and it's not necessarily universal, but the, the papers on the quarter system were short. Um, <laughs> that is just my experience. Um, okay, another question. How flexible is Northwestern with regards to changing majors or switching schools? I will say uh, it's very flexible. Very, uh, a fairly simple process of meeting with your advisor, just talking through that. Um, and you have to typically fill out a quick application. Um, I think you mentioned you had some, some friends in, in that have, have experienced switching schools and majors, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I switched my major at Northwestern. I think every single person, I mean, most people at Northwestern have switched their major. Like we said, like 50% of the class comes in undecided. So they inevitably have to switch their major as well. Um, for me, it was literally setting up a meeting with my advisor. And mechanical engineering sounds cool, but I don't really know what it is. So talking about that and then signing a piece of paper and getting that handed over. Um, so it was, was super easy. Again, a benefit of the quarter system. I know people who transferred in and out of schools as late as like sophomore year at the very end of their sophomore year and are still graduating on time, if not early. So it's just tons of flexibility, really easy to do. I've done it, everyone does it, it's, it's totally fine. Uh, so we got a question asking, can you tell us about how the school is handling the pandemic, balancing, balancing safety and learning? Um, so I'll, I'll share, I know you're on campus right, right now. Um, I think the big update for us that we just announced is uh, for this upcoming school year, we'll, we will re be requiring students to be fully vaccinated. Um, there are, uh, depending on health conditions or religious or other reasonings, uh, there is some flexibility with that. Um, as it, when, it, when it is, as in terms of on-campus learning right now, do you want to speak your experience? Adam? Absolutely. 
Yeah, I personally think Northwestern has done a really phenomenal job. I know it's it's totally unprecedented. Everything is crazy. Everything is up in the air right now. But I think Northwestern did a really great job handling it. So just kind of like day to day for us right now, we're getting like two to three rapid tests a week, encouraged to get rapid tested basically every time we go on campus. And most of our classes are remote. Some have in-person components, but it's really only if you feel comfortable. It was really fun for me personally as an engineering student in the fall, I actually had a 3D printer and a CNC machine that Northwestern handed me because I couldn't be on campus. So I wasn't too upset about having a 3D printer in my room. Um, but more generally, I do think Northwestern did a really good job. Um, and especially like vaccinations are up. They're hosting vaccinations at Northwestern as well. So I think things are definitely looking up and Northwestern's really handled it, I think, pretty well. Um. And for students that were on campus, there are also options to, well, there's, uh, they're tuning in virtually. And so there was a, a whole mix of, of in-person online learning throughout that process. Um, and another, oh, great, great question of, is Northwestern more competitive or collaborative? It's a huge question. This is so important because I think especially when you're looking at kind of more competitive schools generally, like harder schools get into, I think a lot of the thing is like, okay, it was kind of hard to get in here. And when I get in there, is it going to be competitive as well? I think that's a really great question to ask. In my experience, absolutely not. Northwestern is one of the most collaborative places that I've been. And I think it's been really amazing because a lot of our, with my major, with almost everyone else's major, a ton of group projects, a ton of like study groups, a ton of like people who do their homework together, or people who study for tests together. And there's really no, you know, kind of bad will <laughs> towards anybody. Like I'm basically like a rising tide lifts all boats and everyone is really collaborative. So that was something I also was really worried about, um, especially like being a woman in engineering. And that was something that I totally did not experience as any kind of competitive because that's not fun. That's not a fun place to learn. So Northwestern is, is very collaborative. I'll make my, my one high school uh, musical reference. Uh, so besides from sharing a uh, wildcat mascot with East High School, we also share the philosophy of being all in this together. <laughs> Had to do it. Uh, great. So another question we have, what types of students thrive at Northwest? That is a great, and I think, as we talked about, there's so many different students that come into these spaces. I think those ones that we really look for are, are the ones that do well at Northwesterns are the ones that like to explore, uh, that like to really, um, again, fit into that collaborative environment and uh, are eager to learn and really spread their wings. I think the big thing about college and, uh, is it's a time for you to develop, a time for you to kind of learn what your passions are. Uh, and so students that were able to really fit into that environment. Uh, I think do well. Um, you have perspective on that too? Yeah, I totally agree. I think the only other thing is like people who are willing to kind of check their ego at the door. I think Northwestern is, it's definitely a humbling experience, but it's also a place where everyone will like, I don't know, people don't have a big head. Everyone just kind of walks around and people do the coolest stuff and like sometimes you just would never know. So I think that's one thing to do a little bit back to kind of that competitive nature. And I also think everyone here is just so passionate about something. It, it could be something so rant like I'm taking pottery classes right now and my friends are laughing at how passionate I am about pottery but that's my thing right now that I'm passionate about but people are just passionate about so many things and I think that's one thing also that like kind of makes Northwestern student distinct is not only can they be passionate about something kind of weird or kind of off the beat but also that people will be there to support them and, and tell them that they're cool and not ridiculous so I think that's the other thing as well. Oh, this is a, a good one for you. How easy is it to adapt to a Chicago winter if you come from somewhere with a warm climate? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so one thing that I, it took me a while to believe, but I believe it now, is that there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothes. Um, so you just learn how to dress, you learn the value in wool socks, you learn the value in layering. And I can say there's nothing more beautiful than Evans, Evanston Spring. I thought there's nothing more beautiful than Mississippi Spring, but I was proven totally wrong. My first year in um, Northwestern. So we definitely appreciate the sunshine. It's also so great. Like Northwestern is beautiful and it's even more beautiful covered in the snow. So it's also really nice if you can just sit in your window and look at it from there. But yeah, no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothes. 
Uh, as someone who came from Massachusetts, uh, we have a fair, fair share of not so great weather in the cold. Uh, and so my biggest advice is layers. Uh, just learn to layer and you'll, that will take you far. Um, and like I mentioned, we have our inner campus shuttle, which is great for those days you might want, want to trek in the snow around campus. Um, what is your favorite class in your infinite Ooh, Great question. Okay, so honestly, my favorite class I've taken at Northwestern was actually design sketching one, um, which is taught by a professor at Northwestern named Walter Herbst, who's like in his 80s and is a really famous like industrial designer and inventor. And he literally just teaches this sketching class where all you do is draw boxes and lines and perspective and all this stuff, but it's really in like the nitty gritty and he's great and he's a little bit grumpy, but when he tells you that you drew your line really well, it really means a lot more. So I think that was one of my favorite classes is just really getting to be there and learn something so simple from somebody who literally has like 150 patents to his name and still feel like the stuff you were doing was like meaningful and that like what he, the feedback he was giving you back was like very important. So that was definitely one of my favorite classes at Northwestern. I haven't taken it, um, but there's this class called uh, Maple Syrup and Climate Change. Um, and so I think it's really cool because we have a bunch of maple syrup trees on our campus. And so part of that class, of course, you're learning about impact of climate change uh, on maple syrup production, uh, but also as a part of that, you have the practical hands-on component where students and faculty are actually tapping the maple syrup trees on our campus and making their own maple syrup. Um, and so I think that's, uh, really cool opportunity and really good a good uh, window into some of the hands-on learning opportunities. There's a whole bunch of different classes like that. Um, we even have a whole uh, module within uh, our communication and theater on um, like in, within the area of clowning and things like that too. Um, so, so many classes <laughs> kind of coming around in our school. Um, all right, another <laughs> good question. Uh, what are some of your favorite things to do in edits? I'm a walker. I want to be outside as much as I can. And Northwestern is beautifully situated on actually Lake Michigan. Um, and I didn't realize how much I would love that. So I love to go walk up and down Lake Michigan basically until I get tired is, is one of my favorite things to do. Um, but yeah, Northwestern also like Evanston has really good food, like really good food. So another one of my favorite things to do is just like go get food in Evanston. We also have a really cool concert venue in Evanston called the Evanston Space. That's like a little bit smaller and they have like kind of weirder music and like some kind of like local jazz musicians and bluegrass and stuff that is kind of random, but is so fun. Um, so yeah, I, I walk, I eat and I go to concerts. My favorite things to do at Northwestern. For sure. I think I, I'm still having, I'm still working up and experiencing Evanston I know for me, same thing as food, always a priority. We have a great Korean fried chicken uh, place on in Evanston that I love to go to. Uh, I love my daily runs to Target as well. Um, <laughs> uh, but I also just love walking around campus. And uh, like Anne said, it's beautiful when it's in the spring, uh, the flowers are blooming and walk alongside the, the lakefront uh, and just take in the view and have, it's a nice really breath of fresh air from uh, the stress of the classes. Um, I, I think a cool highlight, um, but I'm part of our Native community on campus, uh, and so Center for Native American Indigenous Studies Research also hosts um, a fireside hangouts uh, where they have a small fire pit uh, and just to be in community with each other. I think that's been a, a big highlight um, it, it just to see people and uh, have different activities and fun things to do on a Friday. Um, so another question we got, uh, must you apply to one specific school or do you apply to Northwestern as a university? Uh, and so when you're actually applying, uh, you will apply a selective school to apply into as well as a prospective major. Um, and with that said, uh, you can also apply into uh, more broadly coming in as undecided, uh, which is very common, uh, like Anne said, about 50% of our students will do that. Um, and so once you are admitted, there is, uh, as a current student or as you're, as you're preparing to enter into university, there's opportunity to um, change your major, uh, even switch between schools, depending on what program you're applying to. Uh, and a very easy, like we said, to do uh, when you're a current student. Um, 
Another question, what kind of relationship does Northwestern have with the surrounding town? Are there benefits for students? I think one of the first thing that comes to mind uh, are the different student groups we have on campus. I think there are some great ones that uh, really work intentionally uh, to partner with different community organizations, whether it's for tutoring uh, or different uh, more advocacy based work. Um, and I think in Northwestern as a whole is also working to uh, uh, improve and establish its relationship with Northwestern uh, from providing funding. Um, uh, even all of, like Chicago applicants are uh, when they apply their fee waiver, uh, their fee is wavered. Um, and so they're slowly working and figuring out how to build those bridges. Um, do you have any, any thoughts or experiences with? Um... Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, Northwestern and Evanston, you know, historically have had a little bit of a complicated relationship. And I, I nobody at Northwestern would deny that. But like Nia said, there are a lot of active steps being taken and help repair that. One thing that I actually um, tutor with a program called Books and Breakfast, I go into schools, usually go into schools, but now I zoom into schools four mornings a week and literally just hang out with kids in Evanston Public Schools and read books and do homework help and do all this. And in addition to that, though, I also like meet their teachers and hang out with their parents. And like, we like really get ingrained in that Evanston community and Northwestern actually funds all of that. So I think that's one thing that's really cool. Is there is kind of this acknowledgement of something we got to work on and we're going to work on it. And so that's been really great. And there's a lot of partnerships with Northwestern students and the Evanston community, specifically in education, but also in a ton of other areas um, in Evanston as well. Yeah. It makes me think, um, even with, again, within our native community, um, knowing we're, we're in one of the large, one of the largest urban native populations, there's various native communities in the area. I think that's also been a big focus is how do we build meaningful uh, reciprocal relationships? And it, it's really great to see even on an individual level with faculty and students, how they're really trying to mend and build these uh, meaningful relationships, uh, both as neighbors to uh, universities, but also bigger communities beyond that. Um, it's great to see. Um, as someone coming from a very small school, I'd like to know if uh, Northwestern campus feels overwhelming population-wise, and how easy is it to form important relationships with the get -go? Yeah, that's a great question. I didn't come from a super small school, but I came from a school where only like two people went out of state. So I definitely had the experience of, of going to Northwestern and being like, oh my gosh, like yeah, there's so many people, everyone's so new, everyone's so smart, all of that. Um, and so, you know what, I think like college is a little overwhelming. You 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 go and you walk in the dorm and you load up and there are all these people saying, hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. And, and that can be a little overwhelming if you're not like a naturally very extroverted person. But I think that Northwestern recognizes that and does a ton to help remedy that. So I mentioned this kind of in passing, but Northwestern actually has a one week long orientation program. Um, so you actually come to Northwestern a week before classes start. And it's a really great way to like kind of ease in to college. You make a ton of friends because you're built in, you have all these built in groups, like you're, you, you're put in a PA group, which is a really great resource. It's like 15 students who are either all studying the same thing in engineering case, or interested in the same thing in some other of the school's cases, which is really neat. But then also, you know, you have like your res hall has all of these different events. You have the roommate. You have all of these people that are there to kind of check in on you, which I think is also really helpful. So like your peer advisor is somebody who is an upperclassman who has done this whole Northwestern thing and understands that it's overwhelming and can be a resource for you. So that's just one example of kind of how we check in on our students students, and how we make that time a little bit less overwhelming. But know that like, I, I hear you, I feel you, it can be overwhelming, but it's mainly just because like, it's an overwhelming time. Like it's a big change in your life. Um, but yes, also plenty of students came from like, most of my friends came from schools where they didn't know a lot of people at Northwestern. Like it's all new, like everyone is new, everyone is meeting each other. So that's one thing that also really helps. Uh, so we had another another question uh, coming in about student part-time jobs. So do a lot of students manage part-time jobs with the workload? Are there a lot of job opportunities in Evanston for on-campus? 
Um, so yes, uh, like I mentioned, when you get your financial aid package, some of you might see that there is work study incorporated. Uh, and so there's a wealth of on-campus jobs from working within the different student centers, working in libraries, dining halls, uh, bookstore, or what have you. Um, and so those, the great thing about these work-study jobs, uh, which even students who might not receive work-study can apply and work for, um, are there's a lot of, there's a lot of flexibility. Uh, these places are used to working with students and really want to make sure uh, that you can balance both academic, student life, and work. Uh, and so you can really sign up for as many hours as you can fit in your schedule uh, or, or really balance it depending how things are really working out. Um, have you worked a campus job or know someone that has? Yep, I've worked part-time pretty much my whole time at Northwestern on campus. Um, and I do have lots of friends who also work off campus as well. Like it's, and you know, people are always working. So I think super normal, manageable, especially if you have one of those on-campus jobs, like Neo said it's on campus, so they understand like, oh, it's maternity season or, oh, it's finals week. They get that and also that it, you can kind of mold your schedule exactly to your classes. But it's super normal, almost everyone I know has a part-time job and it's, it's good. Um, so we're, we're getting right close to finishing up and wrapping our info session. Um, so with that, I think I wanna leave with uh, our go-to closing question of why Northwestern why did you choose to come here? Um, if you want to. Yeah, I love I love this question. So, my why Northwestern for me. So, I was a senior in high school, and I was applying to art schools and tech schools for engineering. So, my two favorite subjects were art and physics. And when I actually like learned about Northwestern, started researching Northwestern, visited Northwestern, I realized that here I didn't actually have to choose between art and engineering. Like that wasn't something that I ever had to decide. And so for me, that's why Northwestern is that I didn't have to choose. And also it was somewhere where a lot of engineers thought an engineer who thought art was cool was pretty cool and the same in the reverse. And so that was one thing as well as like people support kind of those weird things that you want to explore and the weird niche that you want to find has also been really great. So why Northwestern? Because I didn't have to choose. I still not, have not chosen and it's it's been really great. I think my Northwestern, because I did have to choose to come work here, um, is for me was the big highlight was community. Uh, and really just being able to interact and see the ways, the, the love, the care and intention that was placed between how we really relate with each other and uplift and support each other. Uh, I think that's one thing I noticed right when I came in uh, was just how welcoming everyone was and how supportive uh, I felt uh, coming into the space. Um, so with that said, we hope you'll be able to uh, you'll apply and uh, join us. As, uh, and we're excited to hopefully welcome you into our Wildcat community. Um, and hopefully you have a, a great rest of your week uh, and a smooth finish to your school year and enjoy the summer that is upon us. Um, all right, but take care. Bye.